with this project, what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a way of creating an economical type armor that can be utilized by more consumer-based entities, schools, banks, malls, airports, places where cost is going to be an issue but might still be considered kind of a high value target for somebody who's looking to, you know, do some harm to the general public. Where we started with is we started with rubber. Rubber is very nice because what happens when you make rubber and you, you kind of cast it into a shape, it holds that shape, but it still remain, retains some amount of elasticity so it'll move and it'll stretch with you. Adding in different things into the rubber, in this case we're just using a common granite, um, will then allow you to modify the properties and the strengths of that rubber. So the granite in this case will help us increase the strength of the rubber, but what it also does, because of its irregular shape, if you think about a bullet and how a bullet's going to move through the rubber, it's going to go pointed in first, it's going to try to you know, rip through the rubber, separate the rubber, and get out the back end. What the rock will be able to do is the rock will help blunt that nose, it'll start that bullet trying to spin within the rubber, and that's what will then prevent the bullet from penetrating whatever you got on the back side, whether it be a metal door or you know, whatever it is that you're trying to protect. You can add in some other materials. Um, meshes are very good because they'll help keep the rocks in place. And so as the bullet moves through, the rocks are not going to be able to expand out of the way, exposing more of the rubber. They're going to be locked into place, again, causing that bullet to rotate and, uh, and, and deform inside the rubber. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add that into whatever prefabricated mold you have. Here we just got a standard 6 by 6 inch square. Um, you put that into the mold and then you just apply heat and pressure. That will activate the components in the rubber to get them to form a solid block uh, and lock the rock in place. To test these materials, we take them to the indoor shooting range and actually shoot them with a 9mm handgun at, at approximately 10 yards. Our first testing we did to get a baseline is we put a 16-gauge uh, steel plate down there and to see what, how it would perform and the bullet penetrated right through it. We added our material to the steel to in front of the steel plating and retested it by shooting again at, at, with 9 millimeter, approximately 10 millimeters. And you can see that with our material on the outside, it didn't penetrate the, the steel shell this time. It did, however, make a very large dimple, um, but we still didn't get any penetration. We have two plans for the material that we're trying to generate right now. Uh, currently, we're making them in about one foot by one foot wafers. And the idea is that we can stack these wafers inside existing products. Um, and the idea is there are a lot of doors on university campuses that are hollow core steel doors. And right now, if you shoot one of those doors, a, a bolt will just penetrate right through it. What we're thinking is that if we can layer or stack some of these materials on the inside of that hollow core door, then you've suddenly taken a very cheap material and made it much more bullet resistant and provide a little bit of protection to the occupants inside. Other uh, potential applications are going to be for tabletops or creating safe zones within individual rooms. An idea would be to put a layer of this material underneath a table and then if something happened you could flip up the table and then you've got a safe spot, spot to, to go into during an, an actual crisis event.